Hello YouTube, Ronan Kazi. That volume should be off when I start doing this. Hey, that's a trademark of mine. So I don't know how many of you have ever played the, any of the Fallout series. Fallout was a top-down shooter, isometric shooter. Kind of like uh, Diablo is, but it was turn-based. So there was some strategy, kind of like XCOM used to be, was. And then they came out with Fallout 3, which was absolutely fantastic. It was one of the just, you know, if it's a Hall of Fame game, maybe not because of what it is now compared to games, but what it was when it came out was super unique and it was one of a kind game. Then when they came out with Fallout 4 New Vegas, it was absolutely through the roof. It was a great game and there's tons of mods for it. But what everyone always wanted to do, they wanted to play it with their friends. We've talked about this before on all of these games. What you want, <laughs> what the developers, what their vision is, is always different. And in defense of the developers, none of which I've talked to, but having worked in business, you got to have a, a business case for some of this kind of stuff. And so when you want to do new things, uh, if you haven't played Fallout before, the Pip-Boy, that's this computer on your wrist. And Fallout 3, Fallout New Vegas, and Fallout 76 are all based on this idea that you were in a vault. I think all the Fallout games are based on it. You were in a vault, so they knew there was going to be a nuclear war like in the 50s. So they locked selected communities in a vault. And when the nuclear war happened, they stayed in the vault. And your various states of getting out of the vault, the vault always fails somehow. All these utopia ideas eventually fail. Sometimes they fail naturally. Sometimes they fail uh, by design. <clears throat> In the lore of Fallout, some of the vaults are all men. Some are all women. Some are this, some are that. And it's interesting to read about all the, the various machinations of the vaults and how they fail. Uh, I picked this game up when it first came out. I was super excited to play this, and I played it hardcore for a long time till I got to this level 18. And it's a survival, quote-unquote, horror game, but it's a survival game. It's kind of an RPG. Uh, I haven't been able to figure out how to look at my character stats or what perks I took. And it's based on kind of this D&D &D universe kind of thing where you get to take attributes and you have core skills. And, uh, oh, I didn't delete this part. I'm going to the store to sell shit. This is part of the game. So what I'm doing at this point is I'm just trying to relieve myself of the amount of weight. So let's back up a second. So you have these core skills and you get perks and then you go out and play and you get levels and you get to do other choices like other RPG games. One of the things that makes it kind of more of the survival game is I don't have this showing, but you always have food and water, hunger and thirst that are always depreciating. You have action points and you can only carry a certain amount of weight until you're encumbered, depending on what you pick in your skills. And so what happens to me in a lot of these games, especially in this Fallout games, is I'll collect everything until I'm overburdened. And then I spend a lot of the game worrying about where am I putting my stuff, you know, and I'll have like broken bottle. But I don't know when I might need that broken bottle or, or, or. But what's nice about Fallout 76 is it has those MMO kind of things where you're... You can go to an area and you can camp it and you can reliably see what's going to happen there. <clears throat> you can get mats. I shouldn't really be worried about mats, but that's kind of that old school. There's Roxy and someone's coming down to visit while I'm recording. Roxy. And so I wonder who it is. Hello, uh, person. It's my son, Chance. So... There's part of those RPG 
mechanics that are great. I'm from this old school where I got to keep everything and it's really not that smart. So I'm going to continually loot all the dead bodies since. All right, YouTube, let's talk about Fallout 76. When it was first released, it had no NPCs. You were just there. They had some robots, but people really didn't like that. And like any game, like all games, if you're playing Diablo 4 currently and they just nerfed everything on the first patch, you realize that this nerfing and complaint about the game is a never-ending kind of thing. It was controversial not to have NPCs because then you have to do your own gameplay. I never cared about it. I just needed somewhere to sell my stuff at. I don't like survive games all the way where I'm like crafting everything and I'm breaking, right? It's that's too granular for me. So I'm basically farming whatever happened during a nuclear thing. I don't know if these people are left over from the first nuclear bomb or if they, you know, I I eventually want to just go shoot and kill things and go back and sell it and do whatever. So it's part of this series of, of this universe, this Fallout universe, which is a great. Fallout 76, not as well received as Fallout 3, Fallout 4. Those are single player games. This is a multiplayer game. I'm trying to get back to this train thing and I'm lost. And I'm going to go the wrong way, which I most certainly do. This is normally when I ask you to like, subscribe, comment. Click the bell for notifications. You might have to unsubscribe and resubscribe if you find I fall out of the... <laughs> I see what I did there. <laughs> if I fall out of the rotation of things that get suggested to you, like of things that you've liked, uh, some people have commented that to me. Just a little bit on the channel while you're watching the gameplay and just in general. One of the things I wanted to do and I'm going to do until, you know, God forbid, I get the channel gets so big that I can't do it as much anymore. I like to address things in the video that you guys have. I've had people in the comments request certain types of gameplay, certain types of things. Uh, I remember back, apologize for not remembering your name right off the top of my head, but there was a person that asked to they didn't comment all the time they said i watch all the videos i just don't comment so i made a video just for them and i appreciated that they watch the videos and they may not comment i have some really loyal people that i'm really thankful for that watch a lot of the stuff and give me a lot of good feedback and when i tell you one of the things when you get older that you got to accept feedback and accept criticism that's what i'm trying to do on the channel i'm not going to tell you immediately when someone criticizes me uh, it's hard for me to disassociate the criticism of what I'm doing versus the criticism of me. And I want you to think of a funny thing. When you're a baby or you're a young child and you first are potty trained uh, to go in a certain area and then you go to your parents like, look, look what I did. That's probably <laughs> extended from there. Yeah, it's it's not... They're not criticizing me as a person. They might be, but they're criticizing, hey, this could be better, this could be better. So I work hard at changing that. So I appreciate all the feedback people give me. Um, some of it I resist because I don't agree with it. And some of it, when I get it, I immediately do something about it. And just to put that in perspective, inadvertently, I'd shut the comments off. I don't even know how. Because I'm an old, <laughs> I'm an old guy, but I do this on three different devices. I do this creation on an iPhone, and this video is a little bit longer. Spoiler alert! So I'm going to talk a little bit more. Apologize. I use an iPhone to record, and sometimes if I can try to do things remotely, normally I use an iPad for the video creation, bringing everything together, and any of the art creation. And finally, I find it easiest to go on a PC and then manage a channel from the PC. 
three different interfaces, old guy equals disaster. Not an Apple guy either. If all this worked in Android, I'm, again, I might have told you this, but this is why I do this on the Apple content. I don't have a Mac. Not a big fan of the Mac operating system. Not against you guys in Apple. Love the iPad. Wish the iPad had a better file system like a normal computer so I could just use it as my computer. Or make, a, or make the Mac more like an iPad. Anyways. LumaFusion. When I first got into PC video whoop de doing things, and I've always wanted to do this. I always justified getting an i7 versus an i5 because I need those extra cores and threading because when I do videos, never did videos. When I finally started thinking about doing videos, I looked at the software like Adobe Premiere or any other Sony. I was like flabbergasted at the price. I go, well, maybe I'll go to Apple. Apple, the price is incredible. So I was like, hmm. Then, oh, YouTube, you fell on the floor. <laughs> then, YouTube, as I pick you up off the floor, then I said, well, how much horsepower do I need to render all this stuff? And I did a ton of research. I came across a gentleman who had built a super computer. Uh, he built his own PC to do all this rendering. <clears throat> and an iPad just crushed it. And he used LumaFusion and, and, and. So when I saw that, I couldn't believe it. So then I started getting into all the benchmarking things. I got an iPad Pro. I didn't do any editing. It would still seem too hard. Eventually got LumaFusion for a job. It was dirt cheap. I got an iPad M1, and I haven't looked back. The editing is awesome. And this is the other kind of person I am in computers. I don't have to learn anything till I use it. So I'm like a just-in-time. So a lot of the manufacturing we did, there's a lot of Kanban and just-in-time. And you, you start living in this world where you don't worry about things until you actually need them. So that's how I worry about my computers. I also wanted something that I could be somewhat portable with. I'm not one of these. Nothing against you if you're doing this. I'm not one of those folks that goes into a coffee shop and then has to do all my business there. I normally sit in my car and get the free Wi-Fi off of McDonald's or something if I'm going to do something like that. And I'll get a drink or whatever, but I'm going to sit in my car, not in there. Anyway, sorry about that diversion, YouTube. And I know it seems egregious that I'm wearing this. This is just what my armor is. I could put clothes on. I apologize. But it's hot out there, YouTube. Anyways. So I found that this ecosystem of uh, the iPad was good. Then I started taking, uh, then I went to my last job and I ended up getting iPhone 13, the mini one. And what I can do is I can record on this and just airdrop it over to the iPad and it's all seamless. Everything is seamless back and forth. If I really, let's say I hit the lottery and a million of you subscribed and I was making money, I would even get that iCloud thing because I could go through all my stuff. I know I can do it through uh, Drive and I can do it through OneDrive and all that other stuff. But with the Apple stuff, it's just seamless. It's a lot better integrated. That kind of stuff's just better. And on the iPad, everything's less expensive. So, anyways, that's why I'm on iPad. So, Fallout 76 probably will move that in the rotation. I tried starting off a new character. It's just too slow, and it's too new. Uh, the, the NPC part. I might have even done a video. It was nondescript. Also, this is video number 350. So, I really appreciate all the support and all the encouragement. The thing that struck me most about folks on YouTube is they've been very encouraging. Everyone has been very helpful and everyone has been very encouraging of my efforts. So, I appreciate everyone. People that started in the beginning and people just coming on now. Uh, sometimes people disagree with what my build was. I didn't want to argue with them. Uh, 
and I don't want to just default, well, it works for me. Uh, that's why I just keep doing the legendaries over and over and over again. And you see that I have another legendary where uh, I just go through. I, I, and I at this point, I don't even think it's a build. Just because I've done it so many times, I'm very confident in it. And with the recent nerfing of Diablo 4, I, I espouse, I really believe this, the build doesn't matter. It's just what's fun for you. My build on here doesn't matter. I probably normally try to do melee builds and these kind of things where I can death punch people. But I don't think I'm using that right now. I think they have a power fist, but it needs power, which is aggravating. So doing the videos, turning them out, I needed a certain ecosystem to do that that seemed to work better. Uh, I'd recommend it to everyone else. Uh, the power consumption a lot less. I needed it to be a little bit portable. Uh, everything's fanless. The one PC I have, the fan, I have the PC set on low settings, the laptop set on low settings. This is this infamous laptop that I'm going to do the video on. When I go to think about doing the video, uh, when I do the video, you'll see why. It just works. So like, ta-da, it just works. But it'll be more about like kind of what I'm trying to accomplish with it. And I think that's really about anything you buy, what are you trying to accomplish? And that's everything. I used to say to folks, there's 30, 60, 90 day goals. And uh, I heard that from someone else. That's not my original thought. But that gives you some type of direction. And really you can break that down. It doesn't have to be a specific time period, but short, medium, and long term goals. And so that's really going to be impactful on what you decide to do. Like take a headshot on this last guy that's trying to sneak up on you. Wait for it, you two. This is Ronan Kazi waiting for it. And I have my new surprise for you. It's the second video. Video number 350. Thank you, YouTube. Ronan Kazi. Oh, bye-bye.